Destination Valhalla. That was a pretty wild night that night. I didn't think it was going to come out of the box. Yeah, this was inspired by the funeral rites of the ancient Vikings. I'm going to be hand shackled uh, to a restraint belt in such a way that my hands cannot touch one another, and then taken by boat to a raft, which has a wooden box mounted on the top of it, and on three sides of this box is flammable brush soaked in kerosene. I'm going to be locked inside this box, chained up the way I am, and I have a period of only a few minutes to escape before my assistants will set the entire raft on fire. I was in the crowd uh, on the, uh, the side of the, the um, area where the escape took place. And the people around me were quite excited at, at the thought of what was going to happen. Uh, we looked out, we saw fire trucks, we saw, so it was a fairly serious thing that was going to happen. The, the townspeople were out and the, and the ambulance and the fire truck, these people were out, the police were out. So it was, it was a major event. I was listening to music. One of my favorite bands is Rammstein from Germany and I had these headphones when uh, you shot the footage and I think a lot of people might have thought, well that's so he can talk to his crew and stuff. No, I'm rocking out and I know that from the moment a specific song starts, they're to like that or I figure they're going to like that and I know by the time another song is finished, it should be fully involved. And that uh, there is a mistake that had been done. The one thing that we hadn't worked out was the timing. You know, with all the excitement of the stunt coming through and doing it, doing the act itself, you get so busy and so tuned into what you're doing that you forget a lot of things. So we just lit up and let it go in. But we were supposed to wait. It is raining inside the box. The flames already six feet high. For those of you watching on the TV screens, it is just as horrible as it looks. They are getting away as quickly as they can. They are back with the boat out of the, the fire. And then when the barge was set on fire, uh, that's when the excitement kind of rose. Is he actually going to escape from it? And it seemed like the longest time. We were standing in the crowd and nothing was happening except these flames engulfing this barge. And then I didn't have to guess by the music anymore because then fire and smoke is starting to come through the back wall and it's time to go. And then finally Steve did emerge and you know he was obviously, he had struggled to get out and had succeeded and, and the toll on him was obvious, he was, you know, the, the fatigue, the coughing, the whole thing and, that, and it was a very authentic escape and I think people were quite impressed by it. Big hand for the Dark Master himself, Steve Santini. Steve, Jack, you're surrounded by water. Picture the scariest thing you can imagine and then amplify it by 10. But I heard the announcer on shore saying something like, here we go. And then the next thing, I guess they were listening to his cue, and the next thing I know, the substantial on fire. I heard the cracking of the wood and I felt the heat immediately and after one minute, I could hardly breathe. And after two minutes, I was like, smoke was starting to pour in through cracks in the back slots and the heat was just insane. And finally, and I was trying to get out of these uh, chains and finally I got them, then I had to pick open this padlock that held the door. So I'm doing all this in the dark, freaking out at the same time because they were supposed to wait. And then um, just put my elbow into the door and it fell and I smashed my arm up nicely. And, and uh, I don't really remember a hell of a lot. My arm went in the water and that kind of made me say, wait a minute, you're laying here and you're feeling really hot because the fire was uh, cooking me. So I stood up and I was about to jump in the water but then the boat came right there so I jumped in that instead and it was hot. I don't recommend anybody trying it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Destination Valhalla with the Dark Master of Escape, Mr. Steve Santini! Magicians nowadays are, you know, long-haired young guys wearing shirts and jeans and it's all very relaxed and it's all about apparatus that they've obviously purchased at great expense to do the trick it's about the, you know, the lithe blondes that come out and help them. So it's a, it's a show. It's a show, basically, and it's set up like an entertainment. And it is an entertainment. So the trick 
that they do, the escape is actually just a small portion of the entertainment. It's all, it's all the bells and whistles that are around it that get the audience, hopefully in their minds, you know, uh, entertained and wanting to come back for more. And I think uh, for Steve, it's more of a, um, it's more serious. It's not about the entertainment, although that's part of it. But I think the crux of it is the ability to get out of situations that are extreme. There's no way that you'd be able to compare what Steve's does to the magicians like David Copperfield or David Blaine or which they rely on illusions to get the idea across. You can't get any more real than what Steve does because there's no getting out of it except by his own, on his own. I want them to see me and walk away and go, holy crap, we've never seen anything like that. And know farewell that they never will ever see anything like that. Escape or die!